That's what I built. Dwan Dandridge, Blackley's Detroit, and we are back with another episode of Speak for Yourself. And we have a very special guest uh, joining us today. It's Johnny Turnage from Black Tech Saturdays. Johnny, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yeah, so the way that we typically kick it off is we invite the guests to introduce themselves mm-hmm. in whatever the way you want our audience to know you. Oh, man. All right, don't judge me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Johnny Turnage. I am one of the co-founders of Black Tech Saturdays. I started it with my wife um, less than a year ago, and it has been... A very interesting journey and it has been beautiful to see so many people learn and grow native detroiter born on the east side and i have the privilege of being an army brat so i got to live around the country a little bit and check out things a little differently nice that's what's up yeah so for anybody that like is maybe not even on social media at all <laughs> or don't really pay attention to what's happening like media <laughs> or don't get any like news outlets at all, local news outlets at all, um, what is Black Tech Saturday? Yes, yes. So the best way to answer what is Black Tech Saturday, it has to start with how we started. Black Tech Saturday started out with just five of us trying to figure out five entrepreneurs, five tech founders trying to figure out how to get our businesses a little further. And then one day we said, I think there should be other people here. We aren't the only ones who don't know how to break into this tech thing. We aren't the only ones struggling. And it has grown from those five people to, at this point, we have what, seven, 8,000 Detroiters, people coming from all over the country who come to a, a two, three hour event to like really learn to grow where we do workshops, we do trainings everything to help you figure out how to break into tech, how to learn about it. And it's been beautiful to watch and we're excited to just keep expanding and growing. So I have a, a question that I'm interested in knowing. So I know what it's like to put on events. Yeah. Um, and we do them like maybe quarterly or something like that. Y'all doing it every weekend. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Every weekend y'all putting on another event and it's like, there's a high level of expectation. When I, when I know I'm going to Black Tech Saturday, like my expectation level is up here for, for what I expect to experience from who I expect to meet there, um, the information I, I expect to receive, the food, yeah. you know what I mean? If I'm in the, the mood to sip a little something, yeah. you know what I mean? Like the expectation is pretty high. So as someone that's been able to come and 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 visit and just, participate the high you walk away from feeling what is that like for you do you get to be like damn this was another amazing saturday or are you like who i'm glad that's over because all that went into pulling this off and putting all the people together and yeah doing the thing yeah so i have to say i grew up in community organizing so my whole life has been a series of we're pulling together people to do something. Rather, right? since I was like three, I started volunteering myself when I was twelve. So I don't have that normal experience. I think we have a Saturday event, and the first thing I go is, "All right, what should we have done better?" And the team, I have to <laughs> give them a break because I immediately start right. saying, "Right, okay, so next week we should make sure we do this." And it was a little loud at this point. Let's do this, or my intro wasn't right, or. I had dry mouth, so I feel like I stumbled over words. I had been taught to like consistently evaluate. Um, I love the energy. I think I don't get to experience the, oh, wow, this was so dope. I really only get that when people give us feedback because people love telling us about ourselves. And I'm like, good or bad, I'm hungry for the feedback. Like, was this helpful? So you can usually find me at a Black Tech Saturdays. Was this helpful? Tell me if it wasn't. Like, tell me what we need to do to make it more helpful for you. but I mean, I usually come back to the building Sunday morning and I start just to write up like, what do we need next? What did we learn? So it's definitely a passion and a lot of curiosity. I'm very, very interested in how can black people build wealth? How can people in Detroit build wealth? Yeah. Tech is one of the fastest ways to build wealth. So much of what I think about Black Tech Saturdays is we kind of have a living lab to figure out what are the things that we have to piece together so you can say, I'm going to start this tech business and then we're going to get you to a million dollars as fast as humanly possible as possible. And that's what we really, that's like, I'm just obsessed on the outcomes. So 
I don't really get to like sit in it as much. It's usually when I read somebody's post and I go, I got nine convicts from coming to the event. Let's figure out what we need to do to make more of that happen. That happen. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. So when I was invited to to speak, uh, yeah. like his, you came for a phone line. Oh, it was great. Oh, it was great. <laughs> it was beautiful. Here's the beautiful thing, right? So one of my children, my um, middle child, um, Aya, who's a sophomore at MSU, yes. she was there in attendance. And then I also had a couple uncles in town. Yes. Um, both from Detroit, originally grew up on the west side. Both of them went to Cooley High School. Um, they, one of them lives in Atlanta, one lives in San Antonio. And they came and they had an amazing time. And they were like, man, what is happening in Detroit? Hey. Right? Um, so they were just filled. And then my, my daughter is, you know, African and African American studies major, like, Angela Davis, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, um, man, she loved it. Like seeing a room that was so intentionally black and brilliant, um, just filled her up. Yeah, and she was like, I can't wait to come home so I could go back. You know what I mean? I love and that. So to be there with my uncles and also my daughter, yeah. you know what I mean? At the same time, all of us walk away just filled, yeah. um, and whatever way we were filled with our minds blown and open right to possibilities um it was it was rich oh, that's powerful uh that part that is my favorite part and i think that's the core of what we have to keep figuring out that intergenerational experience of why i'm there with my daughter and my uncles i'm like we all should be learning at the end of the day there are things that i think we all need and a big piece for us is we know it's joy we have to feel joy. We are in an 80% black city and we don't nearly come into enough events that it's us doing great things, doing amazing things. And you go, there are a lot of smart people here. Honestly, I just meet people every day. I'm like, you are way smarter than me. Actually, can you teach me some things? Yeah. And I love when people come away finding that. And I think the city, we're still a little big city, but sometimes a lot of our most talented people, I'm like, you don't get to see them. Sometimes we're a little quiet. Sometimes we're told we can't do that love when we get to highlight that and it's people coming away with it i've seen a lot of amazing things happen because of it and i'm like turning turning the engine on making that happen that's exciting for me yeah yeah your your favorite thing about yeah. black tech saturday or moment do you have a favorite thing or moment who those are i think it's two questions so my favorite part about black tech saturdays it's something we call black tech saturday's founder takeover where for one of the Saturdays of the month, we actually turn over the Saturday to the entrepreneurs in the community to lead a workshop. And I'm like, show everybody your genius. There are a lot of smart people. So they take over, they talk about AI, they talk about branding, they talk about marketing, um, and they infuse it with tech. Last Saturday, we had a beauty tech conversation. And I know there's a lot of beauty and tech. Conversation. And I'm like, we are the home of beauty. Detroit, like, oh, yeah. we can push oh, yeah. publishing. But when you add in that tech part and scaling it, well, I'm like, there are a lot of very skilled black women in this city. And I'm like, how do we help y'all build an empire? How do we support that? It was one of the most well-attended sessions to the point where they had chairs all the way across. And that's what I love because there are four women who, mm, at least the back, the moderator, she's like the other people on the panel. One I went to church with, the other I grew up with. And when she came to me last summer, she's like, I'm looking to build a community around the beauty and tech. I think this could be a billion dollar industry in Detroit, but I don't know anybody else like me. And I was like, really? I think there are a lot of people like you. And then when she came over at the end, Johnny, I knew these people. And I was like, I told you, you had already met your community. But she had, like, we hadn't been shown in that light. So the moments for me at Black Tech Saturday that mean the most is when we can put that spotlight on people and let them step onto that stage. Not a lot of us get that like big glory moment. I'm like, everyone showed up to see you. She was like, why did y'all give me such a big session? I was like, I think it's gonna be the most well attended. Honestly, we could have left you in the main stage. But <laughs> you're building a billion dollar industry. Yeah, right? yeah. So uh, those are, I love that. I love the spotlight. And I think the best moment for us in Black Tech Saturday, um, it goes to last year, we had a federal resource panel 
and National Science Foundation came in, NASA came in, Department of Defense. But the founder who inspired me to say, hey, I think we should do this, I called him a few days before and I was like, you know, this is your panel, right? And he's like, what? And I was like, I have no business moderating a panel. You just got almost $300,000. You were one of the few black founders who got the grant. It's not my panel. And so we coached him and then him stepping up on the spotlight to like really lead it. I'm like, that's what this is about. It's not how many times I can jump on the mic and stumble over words. It's, hey, you doing this, you dope. I don't care what you think. You're qualified to do this. So this is your table. So though that is watching him grow, watching that growth, that it inspires me. I'm like, I gotta get better. I got too many smart people around me. I gotta keep getting better. That's, yeah, like the sharing of platforms is huge. Yes. There are a lot of um, Detroiters that I'm inspired by. Yeah. I like people being one, I mean two. The, uh, we can call us one. We yeah, can, we're like, I'm one. I don't got it. Y'all being like, some that I'm, I'm really inspired by when it comes to sharing platform. Yeah. And uh, creating audience, then sharing that platform. That's that's huge. Um, What's, what's coming up? Ooh. So black how many for Black Fix Excited is I think one of the things we're most excited about is um Black Ambition Prize. It started in 2020. Pharrell Williams Pharrell Williams started it to really help create and foster more of this tech innovation and really like corral some of the celebrities to put their dollars into these companies. The first ever winner won a million dollars. His name is Justin Turk. He's from Detroit. 2021. He is really good friends with director Felicia Hatcher, and she's coming here April 13th because surprisingly, Detroit has actually had a finalist every year they've existed. Well, and I'm like, I think we're overdue for another million dollar winner. Yeah, I like so we are like bringing this. her here to spend time with the entrepreneurs to share her story, talk about how you get it, how you win, and really get best practices. And we want to just do some time leaning in. I'm convinced that I'm like, look, we're going to get a million dollars. We're going to get a lot of people who are going to win something along the way. And that's going to be April 13th. We're back here at New Lab. Um, we're actually uh, coming to an even bigger space at New Lab to give people a place where they can all sit down and really listen. She's really good and, to me, inspiring on helping people step into their genius. And we've already had some of the, the engineering groups on Instagram have started to reach out like, Felicia's coming. I'm like, you all should be here because if you don't have an entrepreneur idea, some tech companies that you should be talking to. Anyway, you right. could be supporting them, working with Sam. And I'm like, how can we figure out how do we really get into that wealth building space? So oh. April 13th, one to three, Felicia Hatcher's coming. She's going to share her story. But more, most importantly, she's going to sit down with Justin Turk and the two of them are really talking out because he is a black male founder who's done something that not many people know about. He's raised over six, seven million dollars. Nice. And built a business. He now has a whole floor in a downtown office. And I'm like, this is the same guy who went to FCA middle school with my wife. I'm like, you have done some amazing things. His family's been in business and now he's grown and continues to grow and admits when he got into tech, he didn't know anything about this stuff. And I'm like, if he can start not knowing anything and get there, we can all do it. We just need to get the right supporters, the right mentors, yeah. and the people who let us believe in ourselves because sometimes that's not always an option. That's, I love it. I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we, so we share in your belief that, you know, tech is one of the places where you can accumulate well, like the fastest yeah. right, pathways and whatnot. So um, one of the reasons we want to be in this space here at Michigan Central and New Lab was because we knew Black Tech Saturday was here and we knew that there were other tech people in the tech industry that we could develop relationships with and trust. And, uh, you know, our, our long-term desire is to, to get a no interest loan for black entrepreneurs in tech up and running. So um, I have a couple things to work out before we do that. Yeah, we're going to be definitely looking for the group people yes. to help us navigate yeah, that and figure out what... Mm -hmm how what it what that should look like so so exciting times not nice. here in detroit one of the things i was so excited when i saw you all moving into the building because what i know about other successful tech ecosystems it looks like having sometimes the unexpected people get together and say hey so how are we really going to do this yeah if you look at history a lot of what you saw in atlanta atlanta became the black tech mecca 
not because of all these tech companies came in or tech companies built. It was actually because the community got together. You got the churches, you got the entertainers, you got the groups together and said, so we're going to build some wealth and we're going to support our tech founders, we're going to support our tech communities. And I think what I see that's most powerful about in Detroit is you all are here. We're able to learn together and figure it out. I'm like, let's start trading the game. Let's start figuring out how we can enhance each other. Tech is about scaling and the work of Black Leaders Detroit, honestly, I've been watching it since um, the beginning has always been about how do you scale change with people? And I'm like, we got some people here. All the tech founders should really come to Black Tech Saturdays. We just want to change the world. You have very, very few of us have these like crazy ambitions. I'm like, I don't want all the money in the world. I just want it to be better. And I'm like, well, you need organizations that care about that, who want to support people and who we got to have each other's back. So I'm glad you're here. I always love pointing people to you, sending you there, sending them there. And I'm excited for how we continue to just keep getting further, faster together. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So talked about how you started and talked about what's been happening. Yeah. Said some of the things that are coming up in the near future, like next month. Yeah. What's happening? On the where's right? Black? Yeah, where's Black so, Tech Saturday going? As, um, and where do you see yeah, that four-year destination being? The four-year destination. So, at its core, I say Black Tech Saturdays. We started as a pilot, really like figuring it out, and we constantly take this approach of listening and learning to like what does the community need from us, and as we like lean into like what that future looks like. It's just creating an ecosystem for black and brown founders to succeed in and bringing together the things they need. I think there are things that we're gonna inherently build out, more trainings, more workshops, even creating more funding opportunities that we can like, how do we spur these moments ourselves? But honestly, it's thinking about what other ecosystems do we need to plug in so we can actually fast track the journey for black and brown founders. We do a lot of research on what's been working and across the board, I'm like, Black founders, brown founders essentially need like an underground railroad of relationships and networks to like make it happen. Yeah. And so as we grow into other ecosystems and build relationships, we've really been trying to figure out how can we like go make those first steps so founders can follow behind us and scale faster. Mm -hmm. Detroit has an interesting thing that happens. We have founders like Delaney who, when he was in this ecosystem, didn't get a lot of traction. Then he went to LA and raised $120 million, yeah. scaled the company very fast. We have a Melissa Butler who's done amazing work. Well, what she's done with the lip bar, yeah. but didn't get the support she needed here. I want Black Tech Saturdays to really lean in and figuring out how are we keeping our talent here? How are we supporting them? And how are they finding a place to go and grow before they leave? I don't want to have to leave the ecosystem. I don't think any of us want to have to leave so as we continue to grow, it's really about fostering that innovation, measuring it, really leaning into those outcomes of success, keeping us here and giving us a place to keep building because we have too much talent to keep seeing us. Yes. Our greatest export is our talent. Yes. So for us, it's becoming the thing that the, the ecosystem of us that, of, of, that we need, um, what that looks like, I think we'll continue to evolve and prep for announcements, but we're really thinking deeply on deeper partnerships with HBCUs, deeper partnerships with resources. How do we have a better pipeline to the federal resources for tech companies? And how do we teach them how to interact with our tech companies? Because the things that I get, their programs are not written for us to succeed. So we have to be loud enough and united enough to help them understand. We have to rewrite the rules if we want good outcomes. We're not having the outcomes that we want to see. Everyone wants economic mobility, inclusive economies. That means we have to change some things. And so we really want to be a good partner in doing that. And I'm crazy enough to think we can, but yeah. sane enough to know that it's going to take me talking to a lot of dope people yeah. who are doing great work and building coalitions and um, more to come. Uh, well, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. We will get there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just a matter of continuing. Right. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to you know come and hang it out at more black tech saturdays yeah i'm looking forward to keeping you know up to speed on what's happening and, and finding more ways for us to collaborate with one another so thank you thank so you. much for joining thank us. you for having me sharing your rabbits appreciate it
That's it. Another episode of Speak for Yourself. Thanks for hanging out with us. Please like, subscribe, share. Peace. So this week's episode of Speak for Yourself was brought to you by the Slush Queen. Uh, the Slush Queen offers a mobile bar specializing in popular slush flavors, along with their special cocktails, perfect for an event or a special occasion. They cater both kid and adult celebrations. You can follow them on Instagram, TikTok, um, and Facebook at the Slush, at the slush Queen. To book or inquire about their services, go to theslushqueen.com. If you love slushes and would like to indulge, visit the store at 16038 West McNichols. That is 16038 West McNichols. Thanks to the Slush Queen for supporting us at BLD.